Good afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be reading from Acts 26, 24 to 29 in the ESV. And as he was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. I love it. <laughs> I hope you love it too. <laughs> anyway, um, has anybody ever called you crazy just because you're following Jesus? I've been called crazy. Uh, I've been called lots of different things, you know, because of my faith in Jesus Christ and in my following him in obedience and doing what he says. Um, do you know that Jesus was called crazy even by his own family members and they wanted to take him and put him away, you know? Uh, I think he was an embarrassment to them. I don't know if his mother was part of that or not. You know, because she certainly knew that, that Jesus was not an ordinary baby, you know, because she was, she had him of the Holy Spirit, you know, not of any relationship with any man. So she, of all people, knew that, that he was of God and that he was special. And she could see that he was not an ordinary child and he didn't sin, you know, like other children did. And, um... So I, I really don't know if, if she was part of that. I, just, I think it just says, you know, his family uh, thought he was crazy and they wanted to put him away. Uh, I know Jeremiah and probably some of the other prophets were called crazy uh, because of their obedience to the Lord and because of the things that they were saying to the people that the people didn't want to hear. Well, uh, in our present Day and, a, day and age in, in uh, church culture here in America, uh, you're considered odd. You're considered not normal if you are still holding on to the truth of the gospel. And if you are teaching that we have to repent and we have to obey the Lord. And if you're taking God really seriously and you're walking with him and you're obeying him and you're not just having a casual really not relationship with the Lord, you know, you think you are, but not, you know, but you're, you're really serious about the Lord and you're walking with him. Even as, even as a child, I was considered odd because I was so serious about the Lord. I had even, well, even in college, uh, my, my college group uh, at church, you know, so many of them were dabbing into, um, what, what is it? I, I, have a terrible time with words sometimes uh the, the, the thing where they believe that uh the, the world was created some other way other than through god and i can't think of the name and you know what it is and i know what it is my mind just goes blank sometimes <laughs> so <laughs> it shows well either that i'm old <laughs> or that just i'm human or whatever um can't think of it. It'll come to me eventually. Uh, it usually does. Or if it doesn't, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, you know, even, even when I was a college student, uh, I, you know, other uh, Christians in, in, uh, or professing Christians in my college group at church, you know, they were delving into all of those things uh, and, and uh, challenging creationism and, and all of this. And and, and they thought I was strange and odd. Um, even our, our youth leader, you know, he was saying that, you know, we all need to be praying for the missionaries every day. And he says, of course, none of us do. And I'm like, I do. You know, I took it seriously. If they told me I needed to pray for the missionaries, I prayed for the missionaries, you know. It's, you know, I was 
uh, you know, like some people might consider me naive or whatever, you know, but I, and I'm not saying I was a perfect child, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't a, a willfully disobedient, rebellious child, you know, but I can't say I was a perfect child either. Uh, but I, I took God in his word seriously. I took him seriously, you know, and, and, you know, when people said, you know, this is what you need to do, you know, then I, I considered that's what we needed to do, you know, so, uh, you know, so when he says, of course, nobody does, you know, and I'm like, is that the norm? And, and I mean, this was a long time ago. So this is, I'm not talking about the modern day today, you know, because I'm 73. So that was 60 years ago, at least, you know, with, well, no, college was later than that, but 50 years. 50 some years ago, um, that, uh, that I was already realizing that I was different and I was odd. Uh, and I wasn't like a lot of my peers, not even my Christian peers, not even other uh, Christians in, in my church gathering who didn't take it that seriously. You know, they say, oh, we know we're supposed to do that, but you know, that's not supposed to be our attitude. It's not supposed to be, I know, but, you know, it's supposed to be, I know, yes, <laughs> you know, and I can't say that I followed the Lord straight all the time, you know, and there was, and I've admitted before, there was a period of time in my adult life when I strayed from the Lord, and but he brought me back, and after he brought me back several years later, he called me to this ministry, and I have not looked back, <laughs> I have not gone back, I have not looked back, you know, I have been following the Lord straight you know, and uh, but when you do, you know, you're you're, you're considered odd. You know, I, th I think I've told the story about this friend of ours as a man, and he he was upset with me because the things I was posting on Facebook at that time, and uh, it, it, uh, I was challenging some false teachers, uh, that false teaching that he was following. You know. So he, he came over to our house and he, I mean, he stood there and yelled and screamed at me, you know, and, and told me that I needed to be like the majority because the majority is right. And because I was in the minority, I was wrong. That's not biblical. <laughs> you know, if we're in the, if we're, if we're teaching the truth of the word, you know, we're following Jesus seriously and not this casual kind of a thing we are going to be considered crazy. We are going to be considered oddballs. You know, we're going to be considered antiquated or they might call us dinosaurs or all kinds of, you know, things that they might call us because so many people today professing faith in Jesus Christ do not take him and his word seriously. They're just looking for a get out of jail free card and they're being told that they can just make a profession a faith in Jesus Christ one time in their lives, all their sins are forgiven. Now they're on their way to heaven. It's guaranteed that regardless of what they do. You know, some of them may have been being told that God can't even see when they sin anymore. And all he sees when he looks at them is Jesus. Or they're being told that you don't have to obey the Lord. You don't have to repent. You don't, you don't have to follow the Lord with your life. Because Jesus did it all, and, and nothing's required of us. No works of the Spirit, nothing of that, you know. And, uh, so they're giving the, uh, these people the impression that all they have to do is just mouth a confession of faith in Jesus Christ. And now it's a done deal. You know, they got their ticket into heaven, but they can go on, you know, living however they want. Now, some of them may say, but we should live, you know, I've heard that a lot, but we should live holy lives, you know, we should, we should do the things that are right, you know, we should obey God, but they don't, they don't stress it, and they don't teach biblically what it says, you know, uh, in the scriptures where uh, Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one doing, D-O-I-N-G, that's active, that's working, doing, obeying, only the one doing the will of God the Father who is in heaven. And he's and he says, many are going to stand before him one day and they're going to say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name or I did that in your name. And he's going to say to them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, because they wouldn't obey the Lord. Probably because they felt like they didn't have to obey the Lord. Um, and Jesus said, if anyone's going to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily, da die daily to sin and to self, and follow me, follow him, obey him. <clears throat> For, you know, in its essence, what he said is that if we hold on to our old lives, of living in sin and for self, we're going to lose them for eternity. But if we lose our lives for his sake, if we die with him to sin, and we live to him and to his righteousness, then we have that hope of eternal life with God. It's all through the New Testament. If we live in sin, we're going to die in our sins. We're not going to have heaven as our eternal destiny. So <clears throat> we may be called crazy because that's what we're teaching. But it doesn't matter, does it? You know, because it's the truth that saves lives. It's not the lies. The lies send people to hell on the promise of heaven. The truth tells them the truth that we have to die to sin and live to righteousness if we want to have eternal life with God. So I'm going to tell people the truth. If they want to call me crazy or oddball or antiquated or a dinosaur, whatever they want to call me, that's okay, you know. Because I'm in good company. Because that's what they called Jesus. They called him crazy. You know, they called Paul crazy. They called Jeremiah crazy, you know. And uh, so I'm, I'm in good company. So I'm um, crazy for Jesus, you know. And I'm in love with the Lord. And I'm going to serve him till the day that I die by God's grace and according to his will and purpose for my life.